Hi, I just want to share my thoughts. Now, this is left of field, so please just don't jump in the comments and tell me how much of an idiot I am. Now, I've been experimenting with coils at resonance for quite some time. I've de designed many of my own coil systems, and I ended up very happy when some of my coils at resonance, I could get an output that was six times uh, the input voltage. And I evolved to the point where I could get sometimes nine, close to ten times the input voltage on the output at resonance, this is. And um, now also experimenting with Tesla by filer pancake coils, I've been able to get ten or more times the output voltage. Now, using this online converter, I'm fully aware that the, uh, well, I've selected 50 ohm um, here that uh, when I select an input voltage and then it shows me the output wattage, for example, that um, if the, the voltage is higher, I mean, normally, you know, if you ha get a higher output voltage, it doesn't necessarily constitute an increase in power in the circuit. Uh, because, of course, if the impedance for the output is higher, then when you impede the flow of current, it builds up pressure, which is what voltage is. So I'm fully aware of that. So it doesn't necessarily translate, a higher voltage output doesn't necessarily translate to a higher power. Now, but my approach is very different. Um, when um, I'm working with antennas, my objective is not to be driving currents back and forth along measured elements like the classic antennas. So we drive, we have it, you know, the resonant length of the wire set so that it, the currents get to the end and come back in a coherent manner with the source driving currents. And as the currents are traveling one way and then back the other way, they're creating rotating magnetic fields around the elements and then changing that rotation. And this creates the classic TEM wave. So fair enough. Uh, power absolutely applies in that scenario. But the way I'm looking at it with my systems is when there's elements in the air, I, I consider them more like electrodes. And of course, if I can peak those electrodes to much higher energy state, which is voltage, then of course, um, the voltages on those elements have a direct influence on the world around them. And even with the, if I don't have to use more power, but I can peak to higher voltages, I have a greater influence on the world around those electrodes. So, of course, there's no calculators for this because it's outside of convention. But I just want to show you some things. Um, first of all, I'll say that based on my observations, I've been experimenting with antennas for many years. My recent experiments appear to me to be um, multiplying the effective radiated power from the antennas much more than the input power. Um, I'm often running 5 or 10 watts on the input, but I'm absolutely convinced that I'm getting way beyond that on effective radiated power by having high voltages. So let's have a look. I've got the set 450 ohm, and so if my... Um, peak-to-peak -peak input, for example, is 10 volt peak-to-peak. -peak. You can see there it's showing 250 milliwatt, a uh, quarter of a watt output. Now, I increase my peak-to-peak -peak voltage by 10. So let's say change that to 10 volt peak-to-peak, -peak. sorry, 100 volt peak-to-peak. -peak. And what you'll see there is the watts is now 25. Okay, so that's very interesting. Now let's um, change this up a bit. Now I'm going to go from watts, okay? <clears throat> so if I have a 10 watt signal, my peak to peak voltage should be about, where are we here? Um, whoops, peak to peak voltage. <laughs> so this is very difficult. It should be about 63.25. So how about I change 63 point, I'll just round it off from 63. 
How about a change, the peak to peak voltage from 63, assuming I'm putting in 10, 10 watt, to 630, which would be 10 times the voltage input. And what you can see here on the, <clears throat> pardon me, the watts, that's now equivalent to 992 watts, okay? So, 63 peak to peak, which would be my 10 watt, is equivalent, let's say they're close to 10 watt, and change it to 630 peak to peak, and we've got close to a kilowatt. Now, that would make sense. Uh, how many people can uh, run a whip antenna standing on the floor in the house under a metal roof that is grounded to earth ground and run a 10 watt signal and have it coming in solid 3000 k's away into Western Australia. Um, it's interesting, uh, just thought I'd share my thoughts.